So our final speaker before the coffee break this morning is Christina Dodds from Australia. And Christina is going to be presenting an innovative M&D training program for frontline staff. Thank you. Well, good morning. It's great to be here. <laughs> and I'm going to talk about an innovative MND training program for frontline staff that we've been implementing over the last 12 months. Okay. So, uh, today is a day of sharing and we've heard from a number of speakers who have shared their knowledge and experience with us. In particular, thanks to Susan. I thought that was really interesting. I'll be going back home and, and checking out that website. Um, and we'll all be getting many presents of information today that will inspire us to continue to improve the way we work with people with MND. So I'm here to share with you what we have developed at the Motor Neurone Disease Association of New South Wales in the hope that you will be able to use what we have developed in your practice, particularly if you're involved in educating service providers about working with people living with MND. There are two learning resources that we have developed. One is the online training sessions that I will refer to briefly, as this was presented at the last Allied Professionals Forum in Sydney by my colleague, Gina Spollis. I will go into more depth on the second phase of the project, the face-to-face -face training for frontline staff. So the learning resources that I'm sharing today have come all the way from Australia and have been developed by three wise women with the assistance of many others, who work next to Sydney Harbour, overlooking the boats and surrounded by the jacaranda trees. This is really the view from my office. <laughs> and here are the three wise women, Gina Spollis, Penny Waterson and myself. We've slightly changed our identities. So, the first learning resource is the online awareness training for health and community care professionals. Now I'm going to ask you a question. Have any of you accessed this free online training? Okay, good. <laughs> um, it was launched in November 2011 and it targets frontline staff such as health and community care professionals, many without clinical knowledge or training or little experience in providing services for people with MND. It was also designed with rural and remote service providers in mind so that they too can access training and information on caring for someone with MND. There are 26 sessions in total. The first nine sessions give an overview of MND. These sessions give a broad brush stroke of what people working with people living with MND might need to consider when providing care and support. Sessions 10 to 19 take a more detailed look at how MND symptoms are managed by the care team. These sessions are designed to be dipped in and out of by the service provider when they want to know more about a particular symptom the person they are working with is experiencing. The final sessions provide a more detailed look at the well-being and support needs of the person living with MND and their carer, family and friends. The MND Aware online learning sessions are an interactive learning resource and can be accessed free of charge anywhere in the world. They do, however, come with an Australian accent, <laughs> but you can turn the voice off and you can read the notes pages. So the second learning resource from the three wise women is the face-to-face -face training. And this is the resource I'll be showcasing today and that I'm the project coordinator for. And why would we put together face-to-face -to -face sessions if it's all covered online? Well, there are great benefits in bringing a range of service providers together to network, share and learn from. Bringing people together provides an opportunity for people to problem solve and share experiences. In this training, participants also get the chance to practice being part of a multidisciplinary care team that includes clinical and non-clinical staff. So who are the frontline staff? They are service providers and they include paid carers, and I notice you call them formal caregivers. I think that came from Richard care coordinators or case managers, intake and referral staff, 
allied health professionals. And this training is not designed for experts or for people who've had extensive experience working with people with MND. There is opportunity for lots of discussions and the aims of the training are to increase their awareness of MND and some of the common experiences they may encounter, develop empathy and compassion for people living with MND, improve care coordination, appreciate the importance of quality of life for someone facing a life-limiting illness and how service providers can make a difference, discuss support strategies for service providers to encourage their own self-care and resource learners to find out further information when they need it. So how is MND Aware different? Presenters do not need to come from a clinical background. It can be done in-house without having to use experts such as a neurologist, GP or senior allied health professional. For example, in New South Wales we've run 14 sessions using various MND New South Wales staff from a range of backgrounds. I have a background in adult education and disability and the MND New South Wales regional advisors who I present with provide direct support and information to people with MND in their region. MND is also different because it brings together clinical and non-clinical staff from a number of local organisations. It complements the online learning sessions as well. It's four and a half hours in length, longer than an in-service, but not a whole day, and it uses innovative learning techniques that are energising and interactive, and I will go into these in more details later. It uses adult learning principles and an adult-centred problem approach to learning. We took adult learning principles into account when designing the training and activities to ensure we considered a range of teaching strategies to effectively meet each individual's learning preference and that the activities had a practical application. What we know about adult learners is outlined in this slide. I'm sure there's a whole lot more too, but this is some of them. And in a nutshell, working with them rather than telling them. So here is an outline of the day from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. And the topics we cover and explore in the face-to-face -face training include what is MND, Live Every Day, which is a DVD we got from the UK, which is excellent. Signs and Symptoms, Care Coordination and MND, Wellbeing and Support Needs, Planning for Future Care, End of Life Care, and How to Care for Yourself as a Person Working with People with MND. So what are some of these innovative learning techniques? And I'm gonna showcase three of them. And the idea behind sharing some of these activities is so that you can use them and develop your own face-to-face -face sessions and to make your presentations interactive. The first innovative training technique is brainstorming using the diagrammatic person. This activity does away with a lecture on the signs and symptoms of motor neuron disease and how they can be managed by getting people to work in groups to share what they know about MND. And this image is taken from the workbook we use throughout the day. Groups of three to four people complete as much of this as they can and then we discuss as a whole group. This activity also allows the presenters to gauge the knowledge of the participants and then provide further information where needed. Are you thinking to yourself, you know, what goes in all those, those boxes, those lines? And once the group has reported back, I refer them to the end of the workbook where the answers are listed. And after people have worked in groups, we might go into more detail on a particular symptom such as communication difficulties, breathing, swallowing and nutrition. So therefore the training is tailored for each session. So this is some of the feedback um, from the evaluations. Uh, the discussions in teams, groups and interactivity made it easier to digest the information. The networking with others about symptom management strategies gave me practical knowledge to use in my work and it has given me the resources to share with others in my workplace. 
Another well-used innovative training idea is the use of case studies. And I set the participants into groups of five and their brief is to have a case discussion with other service providers to discuss how they best might work together to provide quality care. They, they in essence, role play a multidisciplinary care meeting made up of clinical and non-clinical staff. So this is an example of one of the case studies. Marie is 71, uh, she has MND and her husband has stepped up to the caring role. He is finding it difficult to cope, but she doesn't want strangers caring for her. And I have seven other case studies that I use that are all taken from real life. So here's some of the feedback from the case studies. Uh, we were all talking together, sharing ideas. It's very interesting to hear about other people's experiences. Practical real life examples were provided. End of life care, I have never discussed or been in a discussion about this before. And nice to know your experiences have value as well. A third innovative training technique incorporates the use of audio visual to tell a story. As an example, I show a short clip at the end of the training and it was put together by Michael Lee who lives with MND and that's him in the photo. He has an incredibly positive outlook on life and involves his community in his care. It reinforces much of what we talk about during the day, particularly the psychosocial aspects. You can view this all online, just Google MND Aware and it's session 24, Psychosocial and Spiritual Needs. Someone's trying to get in. So what are some of the feedback on personal stories? The personal stories and presentation style, the Michael Lee DVD was inspirational. Uh, positive stories of people's resilience were great, gave me time to reflect, and having videos was really powerful, and then the link to MND Aware site was excellent for further information. So let's look at the training so far in 2012. 14 sessions have been delivered across New South Wales with 14 to go. So far, 387 service providers have attended, 27 and a half people <laughs> average per session. Uh, any pregnant ones, I'm not sure. 89% um, return rate of evaluation forms. And we had a really even spread of, of people um, we targeted and who attended. So 33% were care coordinators or case managers, 33% formal caregivers, I'll get the language right, I am getting it right, and 33% uh, were allied health professionals. And uh, this shows the overall rating of the training from the evaluations with a Christmas theme. So nobody uh, rated the presentation, the training poorly, half a percent rated it as fair, 22 and a half rated as good, and 77% said that it was excellent. And the overall feedback, I really thought it was a very good, well put together training pa package. I will be discussing with my manager to review and access online training for staff working with clients with MND to share information from today. Clearly presented information with excellent resource material so as I didn't have to be taking notes constantly. And wonderful and frank discussions around MND issues and care. So I'll talk a little about implementing the training and to give you a sense of the scale of the project in New South Wales, we have a population of 7 million, we have 440 members with uh, motor neurone disease and the area is comparable in size to the state of Texas or just under twice the geographic area of the UK. And considerations for implementations, there are costs involved and they include two staff present, present per session, the venue hiring, catering costs, travel administration. But the benefits do outweigh the costs. To date, one in five of our members have had at least one of their service providers attend our training. And those who have attended our training report an increased level of awareness and confidence when caring for someone with motor neurone disease. Finally, uh, I would I like to point this out in every session and it's important to acknowledge um, the, the positive aspects of working with people with motor neurone disease and we do need to take satisfaction from the difference we make 
and also from what we gain from working with people who are facing death. And just to make you jealous, this is where I'm going to be next week. <laughs> but I must say I've really enjoyed Chicago. It's been fantastic. It's, um, it's exceeded all my expectations. Um, and I've got here my contact details, so I'm really happy to, to give any further presents to you if, if you'd like more information. I've also got my card and I've got a little bookmark, bookmark here that outlines the uh, MND Aware online sessions. So you can come up and get one of those from me too. Thank you. Thank you, Christina. Okay, questions in the room, please, and the first one's down here. Hi, Amy Mincer from the Ohio Health ALS Clinic. I'm wondering what your original target audience was when you created this program, and, and would it apply to, to my clinicians who already have you know, a, a decent amount of experience with patients with MND? So when we originally um, were looking at scoping the project, we got some funding from our state government, and they in particular wanted their uh, their, their family community service staff to um, at least have some information about motor neuron disease. So they were pretty kind of, they were at the, at the one end of the scale, but what we found was once we opened the course up and we allowed anyone to come in, we had um, people with experience, you know, we had the whole range, people who had a little bit of experience, a whole lot, somewhere in between. What we found from the evaluations though, is that if someone's had a whole lot of experience, they tend not to get as much out of it. But what I like about having people with lots of experience in the training is I, when we do group work, I strategically place those people who have not lots of knowledge in a group with those who don't have very much. And the learning that takes place that is actually delivered by the person with experience is, 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 is really powerful. Yeah. Okay. Two questions down here. So first. Okay. Hello, I'm Amy. I'm from um, the Milwaukee VA um, ALS clinic. Hi. My question for you is, have you ever thought about taking pieces of this or all of this and, and presenting it to caregivers um, who are, are family members who are within the home? I mean, so often we have family members who are really doing the majority of the, of the caregiving and these things, these, these issues come up over time as they're caring for those people and I think maybe presenting this early on might help ease some of the anxieties and, and fears. Yeah, that's a, that's a, that's a great point. Uh, we do provide education and training for um, caregivers and their family members and information. So we actually kind of, education's high on our agenda as an organisation. So we do have specific training and a couple of days long and over a number of weeks for caregivers and their family members. Sometimes we have programs for caregivers alone and other programs we combine the caregiver with their family member. And so this is just a, a different um, approach. Hmm. But we kind of, it all mingles in in some ways. We're not reinventing the wheel every time. And we have one question at the front. So Claire Flaherty from the Penn State ALS Clinic, and I wanted to thank you very much for an excellent presentation. I think the question might have been partially answered. I was wondering, in your group, it seemed like a diverse group, and the satisfaction levels for material that complex, if you broke it out by the person's level of prior experience, would the satisfaction levels be any different? Have you looked at it that way? Um, I haven't drilled into it that deeply because the... Um, Evaluations are anonymous, although I can tell, we do ask what their position is. And um, what I found, I guess, is those people who've, who are highly experienced and highly skilled don't see it as relevant to their work. It's still relevant, but it's not you know, absolutely relevant. So I, I would have to say, but that's not our key target. So it's interesting to learn our key target is those who've had little experience and now they find themselves in a position where they're providing care and services. Okay, so once again, thank you, Christina, for an excellent presentation. Thank you. Thank you.